Hello, welcome to The Opinionistics. I'm your host, John Moilone. In this episode, no co-host, because reasons, as always. Introducing from somewhere in Georgia, Tom Rule. <laughs> good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Yes, Macon, Georgia, smack in the middle of the state. Nice. So, Tom, what is it that you do for a living? <laughs> there is no short answer to that. Uh, if I had to give one summary, it'd be anything legal for a buck. I'm, uh, I've got a full-time day job. I'm the computer technology director for a middle and high school, but uh, I'm also a professional performing musician. I'm the staff pianist for Presbyterian Church. I uh, record and release albums. I work with the Joey Stuckey Band. Um, in fact, Joey was just down in London, I think about six weeks ago. Um, okay. And uh, other odds and ends as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. What was life for you growing up? Hmm, that was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> I'm, the <laughs> oldest, I'm the oldest of four kids. And uh, so it was always a bunch of, ch bunch of kids around. Um, I was, uh, got into music very, very early. Uh, sang with a Chattanooga Boys Choir. Uh, from about third grade until I got to high school uh, and then ended up majoring in music in college. So uh, two parents, dad was, uh, it was a salesman for a long time and then he became an auto mechanic for a, a very long time until he retired. So it was a good childhood. Um, you know, there were times when I didn't think so, but you know, when you're young, you don't know much. Yes, Absolutely. And out of the jobs or opportunities you have done so far, which one of them do you enjoy doing the most? Being a husband. Uh, <laughs> but in terms of, oh, income producing jobs, that, that really changes by the day because I'm very much a generalist. At the day job, one day I might be doing um, uh, ethernet debugging or working with virtual servers or fixing iPads, or teaching class piano. It just varies from day to day at the day job. Um, the church I play for is absolutely phenomenal. Um, challenging and musical and worshipful and all the things that churches are supposed to be. Um, the albums, I just have a ball creating. My last album was called The Week Begins. I put out last October. And that's gotten some some a good reception, but it's not, you know, you're never going to hear it on the radio pretty much. But uh, I just, I have a ball doing what I do. Nice. Very good. What kind of music do you often listen to? Do I listen to? Oh, um, Southern rock and roll sometimes, country sometimes, a lot of jazz and classical. Um uh, mostly instrumental because for me, what I'm trying to think of and I'm constantly thinking. So ironically, my wife is a vocalist and she always listens to vocal music. So we, we balance each other out that way. Okay, that's interesting. You have something called The Week Begins. Yes. That is what is that exactly? It is an album uh, released... Uh, last October, October 2023. It is all instrumental. Well, almost all instrumental. I'll get to that, the exception in a second. It's look a series of pieces that are looking at an absolutely phenomenal work week. One of those things where, you know, the boss hands, hands you a job and you go, and I got this, this is piece of cake. Um, so it's it got tunes like Percolating, which is of course a coffee reference. Um, Easy Sunday, um, Waffle House Breakfast, which was literally part of it was written in a Waffle House. Uh, I don't know if you would know what a Waffle House is, Peter, do you? Um, actually, I've, I've heard of a Waffle House at some point. <laughs> it is um, an interesting experience. It's one of my favorite places to go about a couple of three times a year. Um, they are all very, very small. They'll seat I guess 20 people at most, um, a diner is, it's a riff off of a diner, but they've become standardized. 
Um, and their specialty is waffles and breakfast. And you can get waffles and breakfast 24 hours a day. They have other things too, T-bone steaks and salads and, and whatnot. But um, it's an absolutely fun, interesting place to go because you get people from all walks of life. And um, the waitresses and, and the guys, the cooks are all friendly and, and they'll holler, hey, welcome to Waffle House when you walk in. It's just a great place to go. So the day when I was writing that one, um, I had my standard all-star breakfast. I think I consumed nine cups of coffee writing it. I had the paper all spread out on the counter. And the waitress came over because it was a little bit slow and talking with me about it. What are you doing? And it was an inter interesting little conversation. But that's what the week begin is. Um, series of instrumental snapshots of a really great work week. Nice. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Where do you see yourself 20 years from now? Oh, well, uh, depends on how long my lifespan is going to be. Still married. I'll have uh, great grandkids by then. And uh, still performing and working, well, working on stuff because I want to work on it, not because I have to go to work. That would be, that would be the ideal. And being able to do some travel. Ah, all right then. If you could travel back in time, what decade would you want to live in? Hmm. Well, I was born before the internet. Um, I think what I would like to do would go back to the 18, I think it's the 1880s in uh, the hills of East Tennessee, specifically Sevier County. Uh, Dolly Parton territory. I have a great, great grandfather who uh, lived there, was one of the only two survivors of the worst um, steamboat accident uh, in the United States history. That was over on the Mississippi. They had this funeral and everything, and he, he had to walk from Memphis up to Sevier County. It took two or three months. They'd already had a funeral and all that, and I just I'd like to be standing in town watching him walk in when they realize he's not dead. Oh, okay. Have you heard of a drink called banana friche? No. Yeah, I get that. That's right. I get that a lot. <laughs> the, uh, what, what is the, the pandemic gargle blaster? Pangalactic gargle blaster. Was, uh, was the most outrageous drink I've ever heard of, but that, of course, is fictional from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yes, of course. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Well, right now, it'd be Macon, Georgia. Um, my kids are here, my grandkids are here. But barring that, let's see. Manchester's pretty nice. I uh, spent a couple of weeks there uh, about three years ago. I would be interested in exploring that. Um, not Florida. It's too hot there. And if I had to park in one spot, maybe Chattanooga, Tennessee, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, grew up in Tennessee. It's north enough to have some weather, south enough to be warm enough. Interesting. <laughs> what could you give a 40-minute presentation on without any preparation? Mm, a whole bunch of stuff. Given what I do between the educational technology and the... Uh, I, I could talk about uh, artificial intelligence and educational technology. I could talk, talk about how to teach ed tech, uh, piano, keyboards, MIDI, uh, music technology... Um, working with teenagers, uh, how to grow old without growing up. Um, there's, there's probably half a dozen more things I could talk about. Nice. Very good. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Would you sleep on the wall or sleep on the ceiling? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
you know, I work in a high school and I've never had that kind of question. Um, I think ceiling because there's less likely to be stuff for me to bump up against. Oh, that's a good point. Where has been the furthest you traveled to from where you're originally from? Manchester, England. Went there with a uh, First Presbyterian church group. Uh, we were working with City Church back in 2019. I unfortunately have not been able to make it back to the, subs the subsequent trips, but uh, the City Church folks were, were phenomenal. I really enjoyed getting to know them and looking forward to get back to Manchester and, and meeting, seeing them again. Yeah, it is something. Did you know that I'm actually from Manchester, England? I, I did. I, I, when I was uh, researching, re reading up about you, I don't. You're not in Manche Manchester now, are you? Well, actually, yes, I am in Manchester right now. I have never seen that many cranes active at the same time, except in downtown Atlanta. It was absolutely amazing. And the oh, history yes. place. I, I really enjoyed getting to know um, the people there and, and some of the history. It was absolutely phenomenal. It was also fascinating the connection between Manchester and the American South with the Civil War, the cotton trade and, and all that. Absolutely um, fascinating. And uh, I'm hoping I can get back to Manchester. Yeah, it's uh, quite a treat. Would you rather speak all languages or talk to animals? <laughs> uh, all languages. I don't think animals would have that much to say, but people sure do. Yeah, would good be, point. It'd be far more interesting, I think. Oh, yes, absolutely. Who was the funniest person you've met? Funniest person I've met? Hmm... Because I've met quite a few. Joey Stuckey comes to mind. He's He cracks me up constantly. Joey's a blind uh, guitarist I play in his band that's based out of here in Macon. Um, we've done a jazz album together, and he does a lot of Southern rock. We've done several albums together, actually. Um, he would rank right up there. Um, I think that would... that Well, my children, because... They inherited my sense of humor with my wife's wit, and uh, they, they're just funny as all get out. My uh, youngest son, it, the, uh, there was a beer here called Miller, and uh, they were running a series of commercials, and they've been slugging for decades. My youngest was probably eight, and he comes up to me and says, Dad, what time is it? And I said, it's... 445. And he said, it's Miller time. And I about fell out. It was so unexpected. And so <laughs> it was just funny. And he's, he's done that to me several times over the years. So that would, that would, he would have to be the funniest, but Joey's a close second. Okay. That's pretty cool. What is your favorite season? Hmm. There are advantages to all four. I'm not sure I have an absolute favorite. I get to uh, love parts of each one and can't stand parts of each one. Summer, it's great because since I'm on an academic schedule, things are slower for me. Uh, but it is so freaking hot down here. Um, you know, fall and spring are really, really nice. Like today, uh, we're, we've got an early spring. Um, our high today was 73 and it was absolutely wonderful, but it's going to swing back down to the fifties. Uh, so spring and fall are great, except for the sinuses and the pollen. And then winter down here is usually mild, but when we get snow, it's great. Um, and in winter, my theory is you can always add more clothes in winter, but in summer, if you get too hot, you can only take so much off. So if I had to pick one, probably winter. Okay. Cool, cool. What is something that most people consider to be a luxury, but you don't think you could live without? Hmm. 
the love of my wife. Some people would think, ah, I can be single the rest of my life, and that's that's fine. But uh, for me, we've been married so long. Um, I don't think I could I could live very long without that. And if you're looking for physical stuff, mm, warm socks. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. What do you greatly enjoy doing, but wish you could do more of? Wow, that's the kind of thing that changes day to day. Some days it's sleep. Some days it's play the piano more often um, or record or create or um, eat donuts. There's just so many things I enjoy doing. Um, just depends on the day. Yeah, absolutely. What's the weather like where you are right now? Oh, at the moment, uh, our high today was 73 degrees. I think we're going down to 40 something tonight. Um, but Macon has extraordinary, we, we call it Macon's bipolar weather. Okay, right now it is 61 degrees. High was 74, low tonight was, is going to be 39. Uh, later on in the week, I sound like a weatherman. Um, highs are going to be in the mid, well, mid 50s all the way up to 70 uh, in the space of three days. And the weather's been doing that kind of thing for a month now. And we'll probably continue doing that until about late March. Wow. Interesting yeah. weather pattern. My, uh, my sinuses are suffering from whiplash. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> What's the best way to start in the morning? For me, it is... Uh, walk into the kitchen, um, brew a cup of coffee, a rather large mug, and then I walk into the living room and sit down, pull out. I have a journal. I, uh, I write in. Um, I'm working through books of the Bible and I have a uh, that I'm reading through just really, really slowly. And uh, I have some other books that I, that I read. That starts my day off well, even when I know it's going to be a tough day. At least uh, gets me going that way. And then uh, a good breakfast. Ah, nice. Have you ever met anyone famous? Oh, yes. Uh, used to perform, there's a country artist, now he's country, Darius Rucker. He was the uh, lead singer for Sm uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. Uh, I actually performed with him several dozen times when he was in as an undergrad and I was in graduate school at University of South Carolina. That was before he was famous. Um, got to meet Danny Kay and Mr. Rogers uh, as part of that. Uh, Alex Haley and Bill Cosby. Um, that was in grad school. Uh, those are probably the biggest names anyone would know that I've met, but it's not anything massive. It was just kind of, uh, we, we were there, I was performing and uh, as part of the uh, group that I was grad assistant for at South Carolina. And so they came over and, and were very complimentary the job we did. The, um, I wish I remembered his name, Fred Rogers brought his uh, music director down with him and the guy came over, we did uh, the, the Fred Rogers uh, theme song. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Uh... Um, and I had arranged that for the show choir and the guy came over and said, where'd you get that? And I said, well, I arranged it from, and he had a, we had an interesting conversation about how he became Fred Rogers music director and, uh, and how it just kind of happened. And he stayed with him for, uh, until Fred Rogers retired. It's fascinating stories. Just all of these people that I've ever met, just the stories behind them. It, just interesting how they ended up doing what they do. Yes, absolutely brilliant. If you could get an exotic pet, what kind of companion would you like to have? <laughs> When our boys were young, somebody said, Don't, aren't you going to get a pet? 
And I looked at him, you know, gave him one of these patented crazy looks and said, are you kidding? I have boys. Um, exotic pets, not really in, into that. I think a cat is going to be as far exotic as I would get. Having uh, children and now grandchildren, that's, that's fairly exotic and an absolute ball enough, I think. Yeah, indeed. What is the most ridiculous fact that you know? Oh, oh, that's triple tough. Because I, I just know all sorts of weird stuff. Um, the fact that left-handers, I am left-handed. Uh, let me put that disclaimer in. Left-handers as a group are better able to integrate left and right brain thinking, better able to see three things in 3D in their head, and better able to blend the logical and creative. On top of that, we're more prone to schizophrenia and other mental diseases, and we die sooner. Dang, that's <laughs> crazy. Well, <laughs> yeah, it sounds more epic than it really is, but it's still a good line. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to quite get some reaction. It does. <laughs> if someone wrote a book about you, what do you think its title would be? Left-handed and still insane. Okay. When somebody asked me, well, how are you doing? Uh, several years ago, I got tired of the, and, and I started noticing how people weren't really listening to you when you say, how are you doing? You know, hey, how you doing? Whatever. Um, and so I started saying stuff that was a little off the beaten track. And uh, maybe this was the Monty Python uh, influence on me. I don't know. But somebody would say, oh, how you doing? And I'll go insane. Then one day I'm going to get used to it. And they'll always stop and look and go, yeah, I, I get I can see that. You could erase. If you could erase one past experience, what would it be? That is also a tough one um, because even the negative ones have been you develop me into who I am today. Probably the time I was goofing around in the living room and uh, I just goofing around. This is uh, I was in college, but I was back home for the summer and uh, accidentally put my hand through a, a glass sheet of glass and a, and a door. So ended up at the emergency room all upset. Here I am a piano major and got shards of glass in my hand and all that. So that would probably be top of that list. Uh, yeah, of course. What is your favorite quote? Mm, so many possibilities to that one. G.K. Chesterton, and I'm paraphrasing. When you come upon a fence that you want moved, you'd best find out why the fence was there to begin with. Interesting. And I like it because it has so much, so much connection with things we're seeing in our, our societies today. Uh, how people want to redefine this and move these boundaries and all that. But we're going to find out with a lot of these things that there were good reasons they were there. And we're going to, uh, we're going to pay for our sins, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. What is the best way to travel? Well, I would have said plane before 9-11, it is such a hassle. Um, if you're from here, if you're not going through Atlanta, Georgia, minivan uh, by car. Um, but having to go through Atlanta uh, makes things just that much more uh, interesting and not in a good way. But uh, I, I like driving my, my minivan. It's just, just nice. Flying is such a hassle. You spend so much time getting there and then waiting through line and then you spend more time in the airport than you do on the plane most of it with for the trips that I've done I'm not a big flyer though so fair enough fair enough how did you spend your last birthday last Thursday 
Um, started out the day at school. Uh, so that is 7.45 to about 3.45, 4 o'clock. Uh, headed up to the music store, which is across town from here where I teach two students. Um, talk with the owner for a while, then popped back to the house and taught an online uh, piano student. His lesson had gotten rescheduled to Thursday night. And then spent a little time with my wife and uh, went to bed. It was a very busy day. Nice. What would you do if you found out you won the lottery? <laughs> uh, my wife would probably have to call a hospital because I'd had a heart attack. Um, first thing I would do is call a good friend of mine who's a financial advisor and say, Matt, what do I do now? Um, we've actually had that. My wife and I have had that conversation. What would we do if... Um, Part of it would be invested, part of it given to the church, part of it given to our kids, other family members, and we'd take, oh, probably 10% and go on a really, really nice trip. Wow. Fabulous. Do you ever travel often? More than I expected, not, a, not often as I want to. Um, and some of it is work-related. I was in Lessing, Lessington, Kentucky last uh, fall for a, a school-related thing. Um, I've always wanted to go on a cruise, but haven't yet. But not, not tons and tons of traveling, but I do enjoy it. Yeah, indeed. Where was the most beautiful place you have been to? So many possibilities on that one. Um, I'm a Tennessee boy. You can take the boy out of the mountains, but you cannot take the mountains out of the boy. The Great Smoky Mountains. Um, hiking up Mount Leconte as a teenager, and you get to the top of the mountain, and just the the vistas you see, the, the Great Smoky Mountains are just absolutely amazing. Um, that would have to be the top of the list. Second would probably be the Atlantic Ocean down on the coast of Florida, uh, just to sit there and ponder all of that water and how much of it there is and, and, and the sky, the endless sky and, and, and all of that. It's just, it's a, an amazing planet we live on and absolutely amazing. Yeah, what a beauty. What is something people are always surprised to learn about you? All the things I do. Uh, I am an odd duck. I, and one day I'm going to, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God, okay, what, what the deal? <laughs> because to be able to do the, the computers and the music at the same time uh, seems to be fairly unusual. I have a close friend of mine who's not a performing musician. He's an audio engineer but he is me at another school across town, does all the technology and the networking and the, the devices and whatnot. So we've had conversations about how those two uh, kind of coincide, but yet don't. And we both kind of landed in the positions that we're in. Uh, wasn't any mass, grand master plan, just took advantage of some of our skill sets. So I think that would probably be the, the biggest surprise is the music and the albums and the wait you're on pandora you're on spotify and they're all impressed and then i tell them you know what my last royalty check was and they're going oh and i said yeah it's not a big deal <laughs> but it's always yeah. interesting interesting conversations to have with with especially with the high school kids yes absolutely and that is all we have for this episode. It's great having you on, Tom, talking about many of your works during a Catholic high school, your music, and uh, wow, a lot of things. It's been great. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Really appreciate you having me on, and uh, best of luck with this podcast. I, I have enjoyed the episodes I've listened to. Yeah. And, uh, say hello to Manchester for me. Will do. And until next time, stay opinionated. <laughs>